Hello our viewers, welcome to Ishazi Farm Lodge. Ishazi Farm Lodge is the only destination that offers the true Ankole cultural conservation experience in the western part of Uganda. It's located in Chihuahua district. As you can see, we're already having the Ankole long horned cows. This place will offer you a true beautiful experience about our culture, the Bahima, the Banyankore of Uganda mostly Chiruhura district as its center point of the culture. Now this is an Ankole cow. The horns you see right here, this is what we call the art of horns. This could be man's best friend. Uh, now we are at our water point as you can see and we have come to water our cows. After the process called Oxetra, we take the cows to, take, to, to, to drink their first water of the day. Uh, and then it's your. You let the cows go and take water. Uh, what we see here is a locally made water trough. It is made uh, from using a very specific type of soil from an ant hill. And uh, why don't we use any other type of soil? Why do we have to use this specific type? Uh, this ant hill soil is also known for having some good amounts of iron, natural iron. So that is what we use to make this water trough. When the cows are drinking this uh, water, they get a benefit of iron. And also, uh, the anthill soil is also known for that good natural smell. So it encourages the, water to, the, the cow to take more and more water. Yes, so this process is called Okweshera. And now here comes our cows. You can see them in the background and there we say Hatogwente Zatsior. The cows have come to take water. Yes, and uh, in the background we can hear our herdsmen uh, giving a sound. <laughs> I've been excited, man. Do it and again. that way, and that way, uh -huh. you encourage the cows to come, and you actually tell them that it's now time for water. Like you can see, they are coming. And they don't. I don't know if you can try. It. Very good. Aha. Uh -huh. Aha. Uh -huh. I just said. <laughs> now we give we give way for them to come. They come, and everything everything here is natural. Natural. The water point is made of soil hey. from the ant hill, and the cows are actually coming for water now. We can hear our herdsmen are encouraging them to come and take water by uh, whistling. Roma hoka chemu nyuanu wanji. Hazana is a quizza. At your threat, the Ziria zona, the Jaham member Gazawaho Gabeji. Aha, poor and poor, I'm your one. Keep it farming with AIM Agriculture. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm Okori Rota. Ndireji. My name is Noella Paulin. We are happy to receive you at Isha's Farm Lodge, Uganda. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been following you on YouTube. Really? Yeah. Ah. And I'm really happy to see you. Thank you. You know, you, Shazi Farm is the first corporate to appreciate our work. Yeah, true. 
they have hosted us and give us the, given us the accommodation and the funny bit actually I accepted the accommodation because because why this is a ranch and a lodge is yeah, that true? that's true uh -huh. yeah what do you have for us uh, we shall show you around we have the long horned uncle the cows really the pride of Uganda Today I'm going to be able to stay in a place where we have Ancom Seveni's pride. Yeah, the long horned beautiful Ankwale cows. Do they have milk? They do. Mm. We shall show you around. You will milk. Mm -hmm. You will take the fresh milk. We mm -hmm. call it a makamo. We have everything. We uh, have the ghee. Really? Yeah. I want to test this um, traditional dish of Ankwale's. Eshawe. Ishawa. Yeah. Ah, we can go and see. For okay. Oh, so this is the. So this is the reception. Mm -hmm. This is the conference, and we have a lounge, and then the rooms inside. You're going to go through and see everything. Oh, that's yeah. nice. Thank you. By the way, mm -hmm. we have your friend here. You know Mark. Mark the the dairy farmer. Yeah, from Kamati Dairies. Ah, uh, well, where is he? He's a surprise. Mark. <laughs> I'm told you're around. He's going to be Hi. having breakfast with you. Hi, <laughs> brother. Hey, agriculture. Welcome. Oh, thank welcome. you so much. So, welcome to Ishazi Farm Lodge. So, you're the man who made this deal? This uh, was a surprise for you. Yeah. This was keep the best for the last. Really? So, this is Ishazi Farm Lodge. You're going to have an experience of the Ankole culture. Mm. Here, we are trying to conserve it. Here on the on the lodge. Yeah, on the on lodge. The lodge. Yeah. We are trying to conserve the pure Ankole culture. I can't wait to see the cows. I can't wait to know their history and their cultures. And because you're here, mm -hmm. I know it will roll. It, has yeah, it will. Has to. Uh, you okay, very okay. Mm. The sunshine is very hot. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it's very good. It's very good. It has given us very good offspring. It has yeah. given us very nice young ones. Hmm? Yeah, nice. By the way, this one is called Rubaras because of its uh, because of, because of this uh, white spot. Yes, the white pigmentation in its ear yeah. and next to its eyelids. Yeah. yeah, so we named this animal according to our skin colors. For example, now this one is called the Hogo. The Hogo. Because you see its skin is dark brown. Ah, it has a dark pigmentation. Yeah. Wow. So we call it the Hogo. Hey. Uh, Hey, Makondo Ekazara. Hey. Gonyabra. Ekazara. Ekazara. Enemy. Hey, enemy. Hey. Hey. Wow. By the way, we also have some cows which are called Ntanani. Oh, Ngovi. Hey. This one here is called Ntanani. Very beautiful, simply because of the black pigments that yeah. stride through its coat. Uh, we also have Mayenge. Mayenge. Very nice, very yeah. nice original Ankole cow. Mm, see, my ha has quite small spots. White spots. Dotted spots. Dotted spots, yeah. That's very right. Uh, also, sometimes the original Munyankore used to chop the cow's ears just as a sign of, uh, identification. of identification. Yeah. Yes, so he, that one would easily be known from its chopped ears, and that one we call it Enkurubure. Enkurubure. Hey. Uh, now, there is something we call enkuyo. I don't know how we call this in English. This is called enkuyo. It is simply like some sort of a brush, should I say. And it's made of uh, sisal for just rubbing the cow before milking. Rubbing the cow clean of all the dirt on its body. And in so doing this, you create a very good experience and feeling for the cow. Like you can see, it is feeling so good. 
and it's also like some sort of a massage and in so, in so doing while massaging this animal you're also creating a bond between you and the Ankole cow so you rub it clean this is the actual use of this instrument here we call Enkuyo I don't know how you call it in uh, English but you can give it a simple name a brush for the cow yes so this used to create a very strong bond back in the day between the herdsman and his cow he would do it to almost all his precious cows every morning and every evening uh, then there is a process here of setting up uh, a fire set point for the cows uh, in so doing in, in, in setting up this point we need uh, dry grass uh, normally preferably we use the emburara emburara omtete those species those grass species that give off a very good scent uh, we also need a singo a singo simply means this uh, dried cow dung that you see here the dried one the grass the singo the dried cow dung and a matchbox to create this fire for the cows Uh, now, what he's trying to do is trying to put this dried cow dung above the burning grass to keep the fire down there hot and burning for a long while. Uh, this fire actually, it could go burning for almost three days or even four days or even a week according to how well you set up this fireplace. Uh, what was the use of doing this back in the day? Now, this here, you see, would provide warmth for these cows, that is one. Uh, two, the, 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 the smoke that is coming out of this uh, fireplace would also act as a, it would also act as a repellent for very dangerous insects. Those days like sese flies and those strong biting flies that used to give cows discomfort. Also, this smoke gives off a very good scent due to the grass and the and the dried cow dung which is mixed up it gives it it gives the ankole cow a sweet sense of peace and comfort so this is cow comfort for the ankole cow uh, locally the fireplace is known as ekomi ekomi for the cows while we are going to milk we find that we have some place we keep our calves separate from their mothers uh, this place you see here is called the chongori simply meaning a calf pen and uh, why why are they two why do we see two of them here and why do you see that this one is covered very well with grass and why do you see that this one is partially covered there are reasons as to why the reasons are simply are this is the first one we use to keep our baby calves the ones that have just been born like one week old and below uh, this was used to keep them warm during the night uh, it was used to shield them from the rain it was used also to raise those calves that were born prematurely what we call echitorogo some calves would be born in prematurely but uh, the original Munyankole man would get that calf you don't let it die because he had that strong attachment to his animal, he would put it in a such, I can even call this an incubator for our calves. It can actually bring up a calf, keep it warm until it's ready. Then while it grows, we transfer it into this other one that you see right here. In English, I think we call it a manga. This is called a manga in our local language. So he's going to open for the one that is there to go to its mother for milking so he's opening uh, these old ones here are supposed to be kept separate from the young ones to actually avoid that competition and that space hustle uh, the other one is for the younger ones a chongore when they grow two weeks and above we put them here and this one we call it a chigombe now he's lifting the door this door 
oh. is a locally made door like you see it is made using small branches and tied together with some sisal it's called a chivu yes locally and it was used as a door to keep them safe from any animals coming through and to keep them inside throughout the night now we put it aside it was supposed to be placed you are not supposed to lay it down on the ground you're supposed to place it on the side like that yes and now you let the young one go to its mother and in that process you call its mother and you can see that the mother is coming yes these cows actually given names according to their spots on the skin uh, and also we give them names according to how the horns are shaped uh, we are starting the milking process now before milking our cow back in the day what we would do would use something called enkuyo a brush to first clean all the dirt on the cow to prepare it for the milking process make sure that all the dirt is off this instrument called enkuyo is made out of sisal and also in so doing this you're also massaging the cow and helping it to go into a process called milk letdown in english in nyankore we call it okugaba it is giving you more milk and in also massaging you will also find that you're creating a very good bond between you and your cow he's restraining the animal for the milking process uh, this rope here is used to tie the cow's legs so that you can be able to milk it comfortably without it kicking the milking pot and also without injury without uh, getting any injuries from the cow because these are animals uh, this rope here we call it emboha hatogo yaji bohera okubohera now he's starting to milk like you can see uh, the instrument is using to milk in our local language we call it echanzi echanzi now echanzi is just a milking pot uh, normally the one we used to we used for milking is not the one drinking milk so uh, there are two different color brushes normally this one for milking is big and the one for drinking is a bit smaller yes So while milking the cow, even thank it, you tell it very good words, you say Kamwaji. Kamwaji. Kamwaji Tat. So you thank it, you keep saying thank you and it will, it will it actually, we believe that you have created a bond and it listens to you and it gives you more milk. These days uh, our normal cows, the black and white Frisian cows, don't go by these small, small culture things, but for us we we even sing for our cows and thank them. We find that most people uh, failed to keep them in their homes because of low milk production. However, through the teachings we have gotten from His Excellency the President, Yowe Rikaguta Museveni, he taught us how to keep specific bulls with high milk production traits. So we see that this cow is giving us almost five liters because this milk pot you see is taking almost 2.5 liters and now this is going to get a second milk pot so that is five liters in the morning and five liters in the evening so that is at least 10 liters per cow per day so we have those ankole cows if you are good with bull selection you will get a very good ankole cow with good horns good skin pigmentation and color and at the same time it can be able to give you good milk production and good milk yields and uh, these cows are also known very well for their skin resist uh, disease resistance uh, traits they can handle all conditions like you can see right now we're in the dry spell but these cows are doing very well when it comes to milk production they are looking so well they are calm they have kept a good body condition they are very good and hardy animals unfortunately this breed is getting into extinction uh, now like you can see he's done milking that process of removing the rope is called okubohora why is he touching with it uh, he's cleaning the pot with the cow's skin because remember that's why we actually brushed first 
we brush the cow first. The cow's skin is already clean. Yes. And now he's actually going to drink his milk as the herdsman is preparing himself to have breakfast, milking his cow. And he's coming slowly with his milk pot, his uh, restraining rope, his rope for restraining the cow, emboha, and his grazing stick, which we call enkoni. And he's now coming to have his breakfast. Uh, to show respect to the Ankole cow and your culture, you're not uh, advised to take Ankole cow's milk while standing. You are actually supposed to put down your rope, put down your stick, and squat down like that. And you even take off your cap like you see he's doing. And then you now enjoy the high butterfat content milk from the pure, original Ankole cow from Chirhura district. <coughs> So now we are done with the milking process and that was our department culturally as the men. Now we hand over to the next department for the ladies. This is the milk pot. It has milk in it. Every milk pot has milk from a specific cow. Get ready to know more from a department that is headed by the ladies of Ankole. Well, uh, she welcomes us. Cannot she has the family much. Lodge, cultural uh, house. This house, she says it's called Ilianzi. Ilianzi simply means uh, those milk pots that she's uh, smoking. She says before she puts milk in her pots and serves it to the guests, she's supposed to smoke them. She's using uh, an, a special tool called a chitunga. A chitunga. And uh, that chitunga she uses a special type of grass. Local language we call it a bunara. A And a witzo. We call them a witzo. What she's doing, she's doing a process called okwitra. Smoking the pipe. Wow. Uh -huh. This is so amazing. That is very amazing. The African way, the African chemistry of processing and and preserving milk. Yes. Mm. And you don't use any just any type of grass. Uh, with Zogo Kureva, that grass you see is a special one. Scientifically, I think it's called Hyperemia rufa. Hyperemia rufa, something like that. And it gives off a very special type of scent that preserves our milk and also <coughs> encourages you to keep taking more and more. Kokheza kuitara okwata obkubso okube chance uchikuvaje kwenda ngomuyonga guri yoguwano yigesa gutagumamu ucheza interesting and uh... I can get part of the language. So she's saying she's now cleaned. We're using that. Of uh, course. Um, is she's cleaned using this scrubber to remove the soot from the walls of the calabash or the milk pot, so that it does not interfere with the milk. Oh. Give me that milk. It's here, that pot. Yes, very good. And now she pours the fresh milk from the ishazi, from the rizi, from the uh, crown, and she puts it in a fresh milk pot, a fresh chanzi, which has been well smoked. 
and it's now ready for consumption. Wow, amazing! So how long can this milk um, stay after it has now been uh, put in this, uh, do I call it a calabash or do I call it a milk, milk pot? pot? A milk pot. So how long is it going to stay there or there's no boiling? You can boil it or whether you take it when it is fresh. Some people they like to take fresh one, another one like to boil it then take it after boiling. You leave and set. You leave it to to settle, mm. and it becomes fresh. So once you've already passed through all that process, mm. so we put it now here. Mm. I can see there are very many, uh, very many milk pots. Why all this? Every cow has its own milk pot, and everybody in this house of ours, he or she has the milk pots. Our African culture is super interesting. Very interesting. We just need to preserve our culture. Look at this beauty, this art. Every cow has its own milk pot. And you know what? We are always stress ourselves in keeping records for every cow you write in the computer or write in the books. This is how our old people, old men, used to keep their records. You can be able to see why is this pot milk production is reducing. And like yesterday, Africa should just be for African Africans and just alert their culture. Yes, so what happens next? Because I can see others are different. It's in each shavo. Hombanyangore. No kuatamate. Ogatum shavo. Okay, home chance. Autumn shabo. Now, that huge calabash is holding is special for yogurt. For making yogurt. First, you make sure it's clean. And she's the only one who is accepted to hold it, open it, and look inside that calabash. Not everyone is accepted to do that. So once she, once she ensures that it's very clean, she's going to get fresh, pure milk and pour into that calabash and get a single drop or two of already fermented yogurt and drop in that calabash. Something that will act as bacteria, good healthy bacteria, I think we call that culture, to ferment the milk and now form our natural yogurt called Amakamo. Now, during that process, she always shakes it, she wakes up very early, checks it in the morning and sees if that milk has already fermented into yogurt. And that is her job. She wakes up at 4 a.m., sometimes at 5 a.m., sometimes at 6 a.m. She will check it and keep shaking the first time. And while she's shaking, that yogurt will produce that sort of gas. So while she's opening to check the state of the milk, she's going to open slowly so that it does not push out the gas so hard. Then she will shake it the second time, the third time, and the fourth time it will be ready. The second color brush will be used to separate the yogurt from the other residue that will also later be used to make the ghee. And it's filtered, it's clean, using her hands naturally, locally, and it's later placed in that small color brush you see her holding down there, called Enzimbo. That one is a very special one for keeping already processed ghee in its perfect state for a very very long time amazing and uh, there after she will give each and every one of us a milk pot like you see her sending to everyone in the place to enjoy the milk and that is the department for the pure and cold ladies interesting mm. can see these Ghee or cooking fat. That's ghee. fresh ghee. It's fresh fresh ghee. ghee. Amazing. Mm. 
Mkisha zama tokele zaba na baganyo. Naba kuru no baganyo. Amazing. I've been given the milk to try. Hmm. Let me have the feel. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. 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 Let me take the second sip. Mm. Definitely. Mm. The first one was a bit scary, so let me take the second one now because. Yeah. I can feel it. Mm. This very interesting is so <laughs> and super tasty milk. What are you waiting? Just come to Isha's Lodge. Farm Lodge. Farm lodge mm. and have a taste of all this. So I'll go with this one, or mm. I have to drink and finish first. And leave the color yeah, Thank you. <laughs> so I'll need to know which color is this one that I'm drinking from. Nagachash. Thank you so much. Mm. And I'll finish. So, guys, this was so interesting. We are in the African Nyankole Milk Club, the chemistry lab, you know. Our African chemistry is top notch. Processing, preservation of milk from fresh state to sour state, even to geese without using chemicals. Oh my goodness. Now we are doing oxetra, which simply means taking the cows out of the kraal to go and graze. Uh, we can see a very beautiful Ankole cow here with a metallic, with a bell around its neck. You can see it moving. Uh, that bell was normally used for easy location where one's cows are. You'd easily tell the sound of your own bell by uh, listening and know that now my cows are somewhere. Uh, that bell here in our local language, we call it Omrebe. Uh, there's also another activity going on there, like you can see the boys are running around with the young ones, separating them from their mothers so that they are able to come again in the milk uh, they are able to come back in the evening and milk they come back again in the evening and milk these uh, young ones and milk their mothers that's why we have to keep these young ones back while their mothers are off for grazing ah. so the cows have gone to graze Guys, if you are new to our YouTube channel, kindly hit the subscribe button, like, and share. I bring you the likes of such. Mr. Mark. Mark has just met my stay in Uganda this time around, one of just the best and the best. It's the best experience. I can feel the breeze. Yeah. Now, and I can even have a clear view of the other hilly side. Yeah. Because and we are on a hilly part side. Whoa. Yeah. That's why it is called Nyaushozi. 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 Yeah, it means hills. Oh. Okay. Yeah. And I can see them. There's there's dung. Cow dung. Yeah, yeah because it is a farm. Yeah. It's a farm lodge. So, so we yeah. have cows. You wake up, seeing the cows. Mm -hmm. You sleep near them. You wake up, milking and doing the other farm activities. This is the boma. Yep. Ah, we can have a look at one. Which one is mine tonight? This one here. This one. Yeah. Okay. Let me have a look. I like it. By the way, thank it's you. It's quite nicely done. Thank you. Wow. Amazing. I'm telling you, this is super, super cool. Thank you. I like it. By the way, it's self-contained. Whoa. There's a bathroom. Nice. Yeah. So these are additional huts. Made out of this is called of change. Uh huh. Yeah. So the inside is the like bamboo, fine bamboo. Yes, yes. And then it's, it's bamboo. Yes. From outside. Yes. And it's so quiet. Yeah. From inside. And cool. It's never hot. Really. Yeah. No matter the temperature. No matter the temperature. There's even a walk-in dress mirror. Yes, and a wardrobe. A wardrobe. A, a reading wardrobe. table. Oh. Yeah. I can. I love the lamps. 
Thank you. Especially the table lamps. Thank the, you. Sorry, the bed lamps. The bed lamps. Uh, yeah. Even a place and I've just... seen, I think you've seen our things are all unique. Right, they are. They are, they are <laughs> unique. unique. Yeah. They are super unique. That one I Thank must you. give you. Give credit where it's due. Mm. Um, you can even charge my phone. Yes, you can. And I can work from here. Yeah. Oh my goodness, guys. And we also have these beautiful, beautiful lights. The wires pass through the trees. Interesting. And Thank our you. signature is always wow. Yeah. Guys, this is such a pleasure. This will be my home tonight. And it's so beautiful. You can wake up and just have a view at the cows being milked. You know, the morning moors of the house. Yeah, of the cows. yeah, yeah. So interesting. Thank you. I love the uniqueness. Yeah, that's Isha's farm, Lord Uganda. It was worth it. It is. It was worth it. Yeah. And pleasure, Pauline, for being our host. And we can't wait. Yeah, and thank you. Asante sana. Karibu. Go and pick us up.